If you thought R6B2 had a lot of infectious fog in it, then who boy, you haven't seen anything yet. Welcome to the R6C2 guide where we'll go over everything we need to in order to help you and your team survive this level where you can't even take two steps without gaining infection and coughing up a storm. Grab those fog repellers, hold on tightly to your fog turbine, and get ready because we're about to go on a journey. As always, let's start off with your loadout. For this level, I recommend you bring with you a bio tracker, a mind deployer, a seafoam watcher, and a burst sentry. The reason I recommend the bio tracker is because there's a lot of infectious fog in this level, and a fair amount of the zones you'll be going through will either be mostly, if not completely, covered in infectious fog, making it quite difficult to see the exact location of enemies and how many there are. There are also going to be situations where the fog levels are going to rise and we have to make our way to a specific terminal to reset the air ventilation. But to get to those terminals, we have to go through alarm doors. And during these alarm doors, it's quite easy for enemies to sneak up on you because of the fog levels rising. So having a bio tracker to tag these enemies and let the team know exactly where they are located will help out quite a bit. When it comes to the mine deploying the seafoam launcher, these are our primary means of doing pretty much every alarm door throughout the level, as well as the blood doors we're going to have to go through. As you know, Mind Deploy is the most effective tool when it comes to dealing with the blood doors, and then when it comes to dealing with alarm doors, well, it's the same thing as we've always done before. Mind the doors, sea foam them, maybe even re sea foam them a little bit here and there during some of the more difficult alarms. That way, nothing gets into the room until you mostly, if not completely, finish all the scans. Most enemies, if not all of them, will completely die to the mine, and you basically have nothing else you have to shoot, and you don't have to worry about a new wave spawning in. And then finally, when it comes to the sentry, the reason why I recommend the burst sentry over the auto and the sniper is because we want a sentry that is good at doing with smaller, weaker enemies at a mid to long range distance. Auto sentry is really only good at close range combat, and the sniper sentry is more focused on bigger, more powerful enemies. So the burst sentry, in my opinion, is just the most effective for this level. And then finally, for those of you who are going for the extreme objective, I do have a weapon recommendation for you. One person, or maybe even two people on your team, should bring a sniper rifle. The reason for this is because if you go for the extreme objective, you have to initiate a hybrid air alarm that will spawn in three hybrids every 45 seconds. And you have to deal with this air alarm for the rest of the level. So having one person on your team with a sniper rifle who can just sort of stay behind a little bit and just deal with every single hybrid will be very helpful and will save a lot of ammunition. Because hybrids can chunk you down pretty quickly if you let them open fire on you, and they can consume a lot of ammunition if you don't have a weapon that's really good against them. And the sniper rifle is just the most effective weapon against hybrids. Three rounds in the magazine, one shot to the head kills them, three hybrids per air alarm wave, boom boom boom, reload, wait for the new wave, boom boom boom, reload, rinse and repeat, and you should be good. However, if nobody on your team is comfortable with a sniper rifle and you'd rather not take it, you can instead take a scatter gun. The scattergun is not as effective as the sniper rifle since you only have two rounds in the magazine and you have to be really close to the hybrid to actually one shot it, but it still can work. You just have to be a little bit more cautious and play a little bit differently. Again though, this only applies to people who are going for the extreme objective. If you're going for just a main objective, you don't have to worry about this air alarm and you can take whatever weapon combination you feel like bringing with you into this level. Dropping down into the level, you'll see that your main objective is to distribute three cells into three generators throughout the level, and these generators will always be located in the exact same spots. You start off inside zone 116, and the three cells will be with you in the drop down, and in here you'll be able to find two security doors, one to zone 117, and one to zone 118. Now 118 is where you need to go to make your way towards the generators, but I would highly recommend you go into 117 first, as that security door is just a full team scan, and inside you will be able to find resources, as well as a lot of fog repellers. Now as I mentioned earlier, this level has a lot of infectious fog in it, so fog repellers are going to be your absolute best friend. So the fact that this zone gives you so many and all you really have to deal with are just a few enemies and some giants? Uh, I'd say that's a pretty worthy trade-off, so head in there, clear out the enemies, collect your resources, make sure everybody grabs a stack of fog repellers, and then you can head over to the security door to 118, do the full team scan for that door, and then head into that zone. A fair amount of the zone will be covered in infectious fog, but you should be able to fairly easily avoid this by just sticking to the high ground when you can, and using fog repellers when you can't. 
On the far eastern side of the zone, you'll be able to find a security door that leads to zone 119, but this is going to be a class 4 alarm door, so let's take a look at a map overlay. As you can see, there's only one room that enemies can potentially spawn in, and there are two different doors that they could go through to get to you. However, in most of the runs I've done on this level, they have taken that southern door to get to you, so I recommend when you're initially traveling through these rooms, go through that southern door, and when all four of you are beyond it, as well as all three of those power cells, shut the door behind you, mine it, and seafoam it. And then when it comes to your sentry, just place it towards the top of the ramp in the room you're in, facing towards the enemies, and you should be good. Once everything is in place, activate the alarm door, work on the scans, and once you have finished the scan sequence, you can head into zone 119. Upon entering into zone 119, a message will appear on your screen telling you to find the fog turbine located somewhere inside the zone, and I highly recommend you do that, because this fog turbine is basically a necessity for the rest of the level. Apart from that fog turbine, you'll also be able to find three more security doors. One to the north, which is zone 120, one to the east, which is zone 122, and one to the south, which is zone 121. However, Zone 120 and 122 are both under lockdown, so the only place you can go to is Zone 121. So get your fog turbine, head down the stairs, there you'll be able to find a blood door that leads you to 121, so place a mine on the wall facing towards it, open the door, and run back up the stairs. Zone 121 will always have a ton of enemies inside of it, and most of the time a pretty decent chunk of them will spawn that first room and get ticked off because of the blood door. So go up the stairs and wait for the enemies to come to you. Once all the enemies are dead, you can pick up your fog turbine and one of your power cells, you only need one, so leave the other two behind, and go down into zone 121. This entire zone is covered in infectious fog, there will be quite a few enemies, so be careful of them, and at the back end of it, you'll find your first generator. Now, once you plug your power cell into this generator, it's going to cause the fog levels in this stage to gradually rise up, and a message on your screen is going to appear telling you go to zone 121 and find the terminal to reset the air ventilation. So once you put that power cell in, you want to rush back into zone 119 as fast as you can, go to the northern end of it, and then get ready for the class 3 cluster alarm that's tied to the security door to 120. As you can see in the map overlay, there are two different locations enemies can spawn, but in almost every single one of the runs I've done of this level, enemies have spawned to the west and never the south. So I recommend you make sure every door to your room is kept shut, mine and sea foam this door right here, and then if you want to, you can mine the southern door just in case you get the rare spawn and they do come from that direction. And that's all you really need to do. You don't need to place on your sentry. You just need to throw a few fog repellers into the room because the fog will rise above head height by the time you finish this scan. And once everything is good to go, activate the alarm door, start working on the scans. And then whoever has the seafoam launcher, go near that door you seafoamed and have another full charge prepped. That way, once all the seafoam gets broken off the door, you can re-seafoam it and this will buy you and your team enough time to finish every single one of the scans before they get into the room. Once all the scans are finished and the door is unlocked, I recommend you open it up as fast as you can and head straight into zone 120. There will never be any enemies in here so you don't have to worry about getting pincered. So go into the room, head down the stairs, one person could go to the terminal in the middle of the room to reset the air ventilation, one person could hold on to the fog turbine, and the other two people could defend against any enemies that might still be alive from the alarm. Once all the enemies are dead and the air ventilation has been reset and the fog is back to its normal level, you can take it slow as there's nothing really forcing you to move quickly. Go through that zone 120, collect any resources you can find in here, and then bring that fog turbine and both of those power cells to the east to the security door to zone 122, do the full team scan for that door, and then you can head right on into that zone. Inside of zone 122, there'll be some enemies, there'll be a scout, there'll be some spitters, resources, but more importantly, there'll be your second generator as well as a security door to the far eastern side of the zone that leads you to zone 123. And just like before, when you plug a power cell into this generator, it's going to cause the fog levels to rise, and it'll tell you to head to zone 123 to find a specific terminal, that way you can reset the air ventilation. So what you're going to want to do is set up in advance because this security door to 123 is going to be a class 5 alarm door. So as you can see with the map overlay, enemies can spawn in two different rooms and no matter where they spawn they have to go through one door to get to you. So I recommend you mine and see foam both of these doors and then have your sentry somewhere in the room facing towards one of those two doors, that way it will shoot enemies as they come from that direction. Then you just head over, plug the power cell into the generator get on the door, activate the full team scan, and then once that full team scan finishes, the person with the seafoam launcher could run to the door they're currently hitting to re-seafoam it a little bit if they want to, but this is a little bit situational. I have had some runs where that full team scan moves out so slowly I actually can't get to the door to re-seafoam in time, 
or sometimes it is a split spawn. So half of the wave spawns from one door, the other half spawns at the other door, and there's really no way to keep both doors perma sea foamed. So it's up to you and your team if you have the resources and just what your current situation is. Once you finish this alarm door though, I recommend you deal with all the enemies before opening up the door, because unlike zone 120, there will be enemies inside zone 123. Specifically, there are going to be baby strikers. So you can initiate that checkpoint scan once you finish all the scans if you want to, but make sure you don't finish the checkpoint scan until everything is dead. Once all the enemies are dead, you can finish a checkpoint scan, the door will automatically open, you can stealth in, that terminal will be in the first room on the left side towards the back of the room, so go through, kill any babies along the way you need to, and then reset the air ventilation as soon as you can. Once you do that, the fog levels will lower quite a bit, you'll be able to see everything pretty clearly, and you could go throughout zone 123 and start killing off all the enemies in here. Aside from all the baby strikers you can find in zone 123, you'll also be able to find the bulkhead door control and the doors to your high and extreme objectives. You'll be able to find your first bulkhead key, and there will also be another security door in here that leads you to zone 127. Now, before you make your decision of if you're just going for the main objective or if you're going to go for extreme as well, I recommend you go to the security door to 127. This is a blood door, so place down a minor two. Open it up, deal with all the enemies, and then head into there. Because inside of Zone 127, there will never be any sleeping enemies. There will be a fair amount of resources for you to collect. There will be some seafoam grenades, which will help out for the next portion of the main objective. And there will be a disinfect station. So you can get rid of all the infection across your team. So go in here, remove all of your infection, resource up a bit, resupply, and then grab one or two of those seafoam grenades. Even though you have a frog turbine, you are still going to want some fog repellers with you, so make sure you still have a few stacks of those, but definitely make sure you grab at least one or two seafoam grenades. You only need one technically, but a second one could always help out. Then once you're done in there, head back out to the door control, put your bulkhead key in, and then at this point you can make the decision, are you just going for the main objective, or are you going for extreme as well? If you are somebody who is only interested in the main objective and you don't care to hear anything about the extreme objective portion of this video, jump to the timestamp that you can see on screen, I'll meet up with you there, but for everybody else we're going to go to the extreme bulkhead door and talk about how we could finish the extreme objective. Alrighty, so you're going for the extreme objective. You're going to be making your way to the bulkhead door to zone 245. This is just an open door, no scan tied to it. And once you head into the zone, you'll see that your extreme objective is to retrieve the high security cargo from zone 246 and bring it with you to extraction. Which doesn't sound too bad, doesn't it? It's only one zone away from you, so how hard can it be to get to it? Well, in all honesty, not that difficult either. Zone 245 itself will never have any enemies inside of it, but it will have a fair amount of resources. So if you haven't fully topped off from 127 yet, you can then use the ones in here to resupply everybody as best you can. However, if you find a 4 or 5 use ammo pack, make sure the person with the scatter gun or the sniper rifle who's going to be solo holding against the hybrid air alarm picks that up and holds on to it. Because they're going to want as much ammunition as they can get, that way it buys the other people more time to push forward into the rest of the main objective portion of the level, but you don't want to have to go out to them and ask them for ammunition or have one of them run back and give you ammo. So having a 4 use or 5 use ammo pack on hand is going to help out quite a bit. As for the other resources, just distribute them as you see fit. As for the security door to zone 246 itself though, this is going to be a class 1 sustained alarm, and as you can see with the map overlay, there are two different rooms enemies can potentially spawn in, but there is only one door you can shut, mine, and sea foam. This is optional though, I've actually never done a run where I've shut this door because I personally never even thought to, but if you want to mine and sea foam this door, by all means go on ahead. The more important thing though during this alarm door is going to be your burst entry because there are two different catwalks in your room that enemies can go down to get to you, one on the southern end of the room and one on the northern end. But if all four of you position yourself correctly during the scan, you can force them to all take the southern route. So I recommend you place your burst entry sword like you can see in the background footage on the catwalk facing down towards the west, and then when you're doing the alarm door, stand on the southern end of it just like you can see me and my team doing. This will make every enemy during this alarm go down that catwalk, go through the line of fire of the burst entry, and then come up to you where they will either alright be dead or they will be weakened, and this will make it quite a bit easier for you and your team. Once you finish this alarm door and all the enemies are dead, you can open up the security door and head to zone 246. Now inside of zone 246, there will never be any resources for you and there will never be any enemies. The only thing waiting is the high security cargo itself as well as a security door to zone 247 that is under lockdown. When you pick up this cargo, two things are going to happen. 
The first one is that error alarm is going to initiate that will spawn in three hybrids every 45 seconds. And the other thing that's going to happen is the security door to zone 247 is going to unlock and automatically open up. Now you need that second ball cut key and that's always going to be inside zone 247. So what I recommend you do is the person who's going to be dealing with the hybrids pick up the cargo and make their way back to the extreme ball cut door while the other three people go into 247 shoot and pull the room immediately since there are a fair amount of enemies in here and you don't really want to waste your time by trying to play red light green light with them kill them all off then use some fog repellers to get through the room safely since there is infectious fog find that bulkhead key as soon as you get it pick it up and meet your other person by the extreme bulkhead door as for the person who's going back there with the cargo take the cargo that way drop it and then defend against the wave of the hybrids if you have a sniper rifle, fall back a little bit so you have plenty of room between you and them. If you have the scattergun though, just stay by the bulkhead door as soon as they come in, blast two of them, get behind some cover, reload, and then just finish them off. And then you just keep on doing this until your team comes and rejoins you. Once everybody's together again, you go to the bulkhead door control, put the key in, select your high scan, and then you just make your way up to the security door to zone 124. Okay, so we're all together once again. However, even though we're in the same location, our situations are quite a bit different. Those of us who just the extreme objective have to worry about an arrow alarm spawning in three hybrids every 45 seconds, and we also have to worry about bringing a cargo with us all the way to extraction. Those who just did the main objective though, you don't have to worry about any of that. There is no arrow alarm, there is no cargo you have to carry, so you can take the rest of the level slow and at your own pace, just like you've been doing everything up to this point so far. So if you hear me mentioning the cargo or the hybrid air alarm or how to counter certain things, just keep in mind most of it does not apply to you, but I want to make sure I cover everything thoroughly, that way the people doing the extreme objective have a good idea of how to finish the rest of this level, because this is the part where a lot of people typically wipe. So what we're going to be doing is heading to the security door to zone 124. This is just going to be a full team scan. However, before we open up the door, we need to check what's inside of 124 because there will always be a singular birther, and this birther will automatically wake up shortly after the door opens up. If she is towards the front of the room, this isn't a big deal as we could just seafoam grenade her from one of the seafoam grenades we got on 127, and then kill her before she can birth or run away from us. If she is towards the back end of the room though, this is a little bit more difficult as we have to rush back there to get to her and she has a chance of birthing if she sees us, but overall it's not too terribly difficult due to the structure of this room. So what I recommend you do is wait for a hybrid wave to spawn in, deal with them, and then open up the security door as you finish them off. That way you have a good 30 to 35 seconds before the next wave spawns in. Rush in, seafoam grenade the birther, kill her, and any baby she might spawn in. And then once she is dead, the person who is defending can go back to the security door and wait there, while the other three people can collect the resources from 124, pick up the three items you're bringing with you, and take them to the security door to 125. This security door is just a full team scan, so once you're ready to progress, the defender can come up and uh, finish that scan with you all. And then once the scan is done, the defender can go back to the security door to wait there, and the other three people can head into zone 125. Now when it comes to zone 125 itself, the entire zone is covered in pitch black darkness, the second half of it is covered in infectious fog, and there are quite a few enemies throughout all of the rooms, as well as a total of three scouts you're going to have to deal with. So from this point on, we're going to be following a very similar pattern to get us to extraction. The one person who is defending, you are going to want to stay one to two rooms behind the main group. That way the hybrid air alarm will always spawn behind you, and you're just going to focus on dealing with them. And if you want to, you can maybe move up and help your team a little bit in between each wave. Just make sure that you fall back in time for the next wave, that way you can deal with them before they reach you and your entire team. As for the other three people who are moving forward and attacking, you're going to move into a room, deal with all the enemies that are in that room, and then you're going to go back, pick up the cargo, the fog turbine, and the power cell, bring it with you, go to the next door, drop them, open that door, head into that room, shut the door behind you ideally so your other person doesn't shoot and actually wake everything up in your room, clear out the entirety of that room, then open up the door, grab all the things, let your teammate know so he can fall back a little bit, and you're just going to keep doing this room by room by room all the way through this entire zone, or at least until you get to the second half of it, because once you get far enough in, you're going to have to go down a staircase into infectious fog. So I recommend you throw a few fog repellers down in there, that way you can more freely move around and you're not just all huddling around a fog turbine. You're going to go down to the bottom of the staircase, you'll see a big door, you open it up, and that will lead you into the final room of 125. At the far back end of it, you'll find the 35 generator, as well as the security door to 126, which is also a blood door. So what you're going to want to do is go back in there, you're going to want to mine that blood door, you're going to want to mine the big door that you just went through, 
and you're going to want to let your defender know that it's time to move up. He is going to rush all the way in, he's going to shut any doors behind him that I can, and then you are going to shut that big door, sea foam it, and ideally have two mines on it, and then whoever has a sea foam watcher is going to stay near that door. The other three people are going to move into the room, plug the power cell into the generator, mine the blood door, open it up, and deal with every single one of those enemies. And then they are going to push forward a little bit with the fog turbine and the cargo and make their way to the extraction scan. The person with the seafoam launcher just keeps seafoaming that door until either you completely run out of seafoam or until your team moves up and they're heading into 126. You then fall back with them and then at this point it's just a matter of moving through 126 and going through a few more rooms that will never have any enemies inside of it and getting to the final room where your extraction scan will be waiting for you. This is a quote silent extraction as no new enemies will spawn in besides the air alarm enemies themselves. So get into the scan, drop the cargo into it. If you have any mines or seafoam left, use them on the door that leads into your room. First century, you can place that outside of the door that way it shoots the hybrids as they try to break it down. And then you just have to hold out there. Once you get the extraction scan to 100%, you are done and you have beaten R6C2. And that's all there is to it. Just like always, if you have any tips or tricks for this level that you want to share, any questions for me, or you just have something in general that you want to say, leave it down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, then consider hitting that like button. It helps out the channel and it helps these videos get noticed by people who really need them. And while you're down there, you might as well hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. I also have my own Discord server, so if you want to go the extra mile and become part of the community I'm building, Hop right on in. Link is down in the description. Also in the description, you can find a link that'll take you straight to the official GTFO merch store. So if you love this game and want to pick up some sweet merch, go take a look and see what they've got. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Until next time, keep on honing your GTFO skills. You'll definitely need them to be sharp for the upcoming levels. And I'll see you all in the next video.